One manipulation tactic that narcissists use is called triangulation. So triangulation is when you bring a third party into the conversation, whether that's in real life bringing them in the party or whether that is just talking about it and bringing that person, that physical entity into the concept of the conversation. Typically, this is done as a manipulation tactic. So when you think of it, if I triangulate another person, what I'm doing is I'm telling one person that they're not matching up to another person's standards. So I'm, not, I'm telling them, hey, like whatever you're putting out, whatever I'm getting from you is not actually enough because this person gives out a little more. This person treats me with more respect. This person loves me or interacts a little bit better than how you're interacting. So triangulation is this very manipulative idea to be able to pit another person against, they might even not even know they've been triangulated, to pit another person against the actual person who's being abused saying, hey, this isn't working. You're not giving me what I want. It's not looking the way it should be, et cetera, et cetera. So with triangulation, a lot of times people are using it, like narcissists are using it oftentimes to deflect. They're just trying to deflect of like whatever's going on. I'm going to try to get rid of it as fast as I can. So, well, you you don't do this like this person does it so much better or you do this. Well, it could be better like this. And so they'll try to deflect. They'll try to get rid of it as quick as they can. Other times they'll create another type of conflict. They'll create a conflict with another person. Maybe that's adding like jealousy. Maybe that's adding like frustration. Maybe that's adding a little bit like push pull of, OK, well, this person's actually doing this a lot better than you are. I don't know what your problem is and creating a whole nother dynamic a whole other conflict as you were on how it on how it actually happens the other one could be there could be using it to reinforce their rightness or superiority so for me this is an aspect that i use this a lot in my relationship i use the idea of triangulate triangulation of using this against my wife of saying hey i'm right in this area and this is why and here's the other people that said that they back me up so case in point, whenever someone first came and my wife said, hey, I think you might actually be struggling with narcissism. I was like, no, not struggling with that at all. And I went and I found other people to agree with me. I found other people who would say, hey, he doesn't have narcissism. Like he might have traits. He might be a little bit narcissistic, but like that's not him. That's not what actually he struggles with. And so I got those other people to be able to go back to my wife and say, hey, he's not a narcissist. That was my idea of triangulation. Now, triangulation happens so many different ways with so many different people, and it looks completely different depending on who you are, how the narcissist is engaging, or the different people in their lives. In talking with people in one-on-ones, I've seen a lot of triangulas triangulation, cannot say it today, I see a lot of triangulization that comes in the aspect of uh, an affair partner or another another woman or another man or even like a friend or something like that that comes into the relationship and they're like wait like why can't you treat me like that person like this person loves me this person respects me this person's nice to me like why can't you and the narcissist plays that victim role and then they look at the other person and they're like hey this person is acting way more better than you are like get your act together i also can relate to this some growing up there was times that when growing up that my family, my parents compared me to other people. Now, I didn't like that and I, I thought that was wrong and I was frustrated and mad about it and I didn't know how to explain it or express it a lot of times because I didn't have those emotions figured out. But they would often like set like an idea of like a standard of like, you know, this person does it this way or like, why can't you be like this person who's acting this way or who's engaging in life this way or in ministry or whatever it might be. And as a result, like I felt very shamed. I felt like I can't be good enough. I can't be good enough as that person. And like finally it came to a head one time where I was like, I'm not that person. I'm not going to be that person. I don't want to be that person. But growing up, that was an aspect that I experienced a little bit of triangulation as well. Cannot say that word today. I'm sorry. Um, so with triangulation, tri yeah, we're just going to skip it. So with that, um, what you see is it is a giant manipulation tactic. And really the goal is to keep the other person like off balance. Like you're not able to just deal with the conversation like on a one-on-one -on -one basis. We got to bring a third party into it. Whether that's we bring a third party into the actual conversation. We have three people talking right now. Or that's where we bring virtually a third party in of saying, oh, this person does it this way. This person, and you bring them into that conversation and it's changing the whole dynamic of the conversation. It's changing the dynamic of what you're talking about and how you're communicating because you're no longer dealing with just one subject. You're no longer dealing on a flat playing field. Now you're dealing with another person in the picture. 
and they have to assess and evaluate, okay, what are, what is his thoughts about that person's? What's her thoughts about this guy? And they have to actually figure out like what's actually going on, and it really just throws a lot of things off balance when it comes to triangulation. I cannot say the word, I'm sorry. Um, so a lot of times it comes out in relationships. Like relationships is where you see it, I would say predominantly, or the majority of the time you'll see it in romantic relationships. You'll see this a lot of times from the narcissist as he gets into the relationship, even just on like a basis, like a surface level, like very beginning, when the narcissist is looking back and telling you about all his exes. He's giving you a litany of all the different people that he's been with, all the different uh, uh, situations, affairs, like different things that have gone on with them, uh, how all the exes were crazy, how all the exes were narcissists, that kind of a thing. And they give you like an idea. So in your mind, you're starting to think like, wait, like they're expecting me to be at a certain level because oh like this ex was really great like they interacted they just were so loving kind but yeah they were really crazy when it came to and it starts playing with your mind a little bit realizing that early on in the relationship there's triangulation that's happening right then and there as they're communicating about exes as they're communicating about other people that have been in their lives so you'll see that and you'll kind of be like looking back and forth. So like an example would be, say, say they're looking through old photos and they pull up a photo of an ex and they're like, yeah, like that ex was crazy. Or they pull the photo and they look at it and you're like, you know, I'm not sure, I'm not sure why we broke up actually. You know, we had like the, the greatest time, like she's actually pretty awesome. You know, that type of a comment is the idea of like triangulation because it's putting that presence, putting that thought in your mind that maybe you're not good enough. And that's what the narcissist wants to do. They want to put you off kilter. They want to put you off balance so that you work harder to give them what they want. Happens a lot of times in relationships. It also happens a lot of times with parents and children. So I mentioned earlier about like my upbringing and growing up and feeling like that comparison that I didn't realize at that time was any type of triangulation, that that comparison was trying to make me up who I was, like I wasn't good enough, like I couldn't attain to what I needed to be. So I need to be like these people, I need to be like those boys, I need to be like, etc. And that puts in your mind that you're always striving, that you're always trying to figure it out. So sometimes you'll have it with a narcissistic parent and it might work in different ways. It might work in different aspects. They might try to uh, manipulate or like gain the child's love in different aspects. So might be offering one thing to the kid that the other parent doesn't love. That can be even termed as triangulation. They could be lying or manipulating into uh, about the other parent, about other reasons why the other parent left or why they're disengaged or anything like that. It could be kind of like pitting parents like against each other. Oftentimes that is the idea of triangulation. You'll see that even where a husband is triangulating the wife with the daughter of like, wow, like she's, she's not doing that. You know, it, it like it's crazy, but like it'll literally use anything and everything. You see this oftentimes with the parent family, with the parent and children dynamic and the idea of like a favorite child versus like a scapegoat. You'll see triangulation going on between the two kids from the father's aspect, from the mother's aspect, whoever's like the narcissist, you'll see that aspect kind of go back and forth. You can even see it between friends and coworkers, and there's a lot of different examples we could dive into, but the biggest thing I want you to realize here with triangulation is the idea that it is bringing another person into the conversation, whether that's physically, virtually, just theoretically, in order to take the person that you're with and elevate their performance. So as a narcissist, I would want to bring someone else into the conversation to elevate the person I'm abusing, to elevate their need of validation, to elevate what they're trying to do or how they're trying to connect with me because I want them to pursue me and not me to pursue them. A lot of narcissistic idea and thought is putting in the least amount of effort to get the maximum results, put the least amount of effort to get the most of love to kind of breadcrumb and string things along to get all the love, affection, adoration, and not have to work for it and not to respect what other people are giving them. 
Hope you like what we saw today. That's a little bit about triangulation from my perspective, even though I botched the word like a million times. If you like what you see here, you know, please subscribe. We'd love to have you subscribe to the channel for more stuff. We'd love to have you leave comments below just to tell me what you're learning, what you're seeing. If you want to be involved in a community of like-minded people, like go on online and download the NARC app. It's an Apple store. It's in the Google Play store. That's an app that we're slowly building up piece by piece into being one of the best apps there about narcissism and about narcissistic abuse. So it's called the NARC app, N-A-R-C, and that stands for Narcissistic Abuse Recovery Community. It's a community of like-minded people that have either been abused and gotten out of it or they're still in the whole shit and they're trying to figure out how do I get out? How do I survive? How do I build? my exit strategy. There's ways on there for them to track their no contact or to track their truth journaling. There's exercise on there for them to work through their feelings and their facts and get to a place where they can get rid of the fable and focus on the truth and the story of what's actually going on so they can change their life. That's what those people are doing. Um, if you don't follow me on other platforms, grab on to TikTok, Instagram, uh, Facebook. We'd we'll love to have you interact there. We do have the podcast that's going, uh, new podcast episodes uh, every Friday uh, besides these that are uploaded as well. But we've got uh, that on Apple Podcasts and on Spotify. We'd we'll love to have your engagement there. Leave a rating. Let us know how we're doing. So if you want to talk to me one-on-one, -on -one, we'd love to interact with you uh, and talk to you. I talk with people every single day that deal with narcissistic abuse, and they've been in that They've been in the shit. They've been in the environment that's absolutely awful and they don't know how to get out or they've gotten out and they don't know how to heal and they're still stuck. They're still going back to everything that it used to be, that addiction, that feeling of like, I have to go back to what's going on or I know I don't want to be with this person, but I still want to be with this person. That's the kind of stuff that I work with people on a day-to-day -day basis to try to help them have awareness about it, get healing, growth, and change their lives. Hope you enjoy. Talk to you later.